Okay, let's talk about the next topic. What we are going to talk about is called self-supervised learning. Before we talk about self-supervised learning, we must introduce Sesame Street. Why? Because, somehow, self-supervised learning models are named after characters from Sesame Street. I especially wore a Sesame Street t-shirt today. Everyone could take a look at the Sesame Street t-shirt. The classmates who can't see clearly, or online classmates, can also look at this picture here. They are the same. This is me. And these characters are from Sesame Street. For these Sesame Street characters, what kind of models are they? We first take a look at their names first. Before we actually understand what they do, we get to know their names first. This red monster is called Elmo. For self-supervised learning, there is a model called Embeddings from Language Modeling, which is the earliest self-supervised learning model. Its abbreviation is called Elmo. After Elmo, there is another animal called Bert. It is also the abbreviation for the most popular self-supervised model today. Bert is the abbreviation of Bidirectional Encoder Representation from Transformers. Elmo and Bert are both Sesame Street characters. After having two Sesame Street characters, Bert's best friend is this one. Who is it? Its name is Ernie. In fact, after having Bert, two different models immediately appeared. They are both called Ernie. The full model name of the first one is Enhanced Representation from Knowledge Integration. Its abbreviation is called Ernie. It's a little bit weird. They just name it after Ernie because they want it to be. You might think this is ridiculous enough, but this animal is called Big Bird. And there is a model called Big Bird, whose full name is Transformers for longer sequences. Now, they even gave up making up words. They have gave up collecting characters from their name. They just call it Big Bird, and that's it. So, in those self-supervised learning models, there are a bunch of characters from Sesame Street. No one has touched Cookie Monster yet. It is waiting for you to make up Cookie Monster. When it comes to Bert, I have to mention the attacking giant. In the following, I will mention the plot of the attacking giant. I personally believe there is no leak of the story. But, if you are afraid of listen to part of the story, you should close your eyes and cover your ears like this. I personally believe there is not. Okay, I'm going to mention the attacking giant. Why do I mention the attacking giant? It's because Bert is a very huge model. How big is it? It has 340 million parameters. Maybe, a number of 340 million may not make you feel anything. Let me tell you how big the model of Homework 4 is. The model of Homework 4 is also a transformer. But it only has 0.1 million parameters. You may think the baseline model of Homework 4 is very large. But it only has 0.1 million parameters. So, indeed, it is a very large model. So, when we think of BERT, we think of a kind of super huge giant whose kick can break through Maria's wall. But, I have a discovery. I found out who is the controller of the super huge giant. Do you know? It's Bertholdt, right? There is Bert in Bertholdt's name. This is definitely not a coincidence. I believe this is definitely not a coincidence. You may feel confused because Bertholdt should appear before Bert was proposed. When was Bert proposed? It was proposed at the end of 2018. The attack on Titan was there 10 years ago. So Bertolt appeared before Bert. But why is the colossal Titan controlled by Bertolt? That's because Hajime Isayama has the ability of a Titan. He can know the future. So he names the controller of the colossal Titan. Bertolt. That's it. So this is Bert. You might think that Bert is already very big. But there are bigger models. This era is a time when there are lots of titans gushing from the ground. What are the titans? The earliest is Elmo. Elmo has 94 million. We use the height of these characters to represent the number of its parameters. Bird is a little bigger, with 340 million. Far more than what you have in your homework. Almost a thousand times bigger. But it's not the biggest. GPT-2 has 1,500 million parameters. But even GPT-2 is not too big. This Megatron has 8 billion parameters. About 8 times of GPT-2. Later there was T5. By the way, there is a Ford car also called T5. Although T5 is made by Google. 
and has nothing to do with the car. I use the car here to represent it. T5 has 11 billion. But it's nothing. Turing NLG has 17 billion. And this is nothing. GPT-3 is 10 times as big as Turing NLG. It's 10 times as big. How big is GPT-3? If we visualize it, it's this big. We first convert the size of these models into height. BERT has 340 million. We will treat it as 1 meter high. So this is BERT and this is me. How big is GPT-3? It's the size of the Taipei 101 behind us. So from BERT to GPT-3, the model went from being as tall as a person to as tall as the Taipei 101. However, GPT-3 is not the biggest model yet. The biggest model I've seen is the switch transformer. It has 1.6 trillion parameters. More than a trillion parameters. It is 10 times bigger than GTP-3. I put a switch here. Although it has nothing to do with Nintendo. You can also guess correctly that this is done by Google. I put its paper here for your reference. If you ever see a bigger model, tell me. So now there are models with trillions of parameters. I heard that the human brain has 100 billion neurons. If we map neurons to parameters, the amount of parameters in this switch transformer turns out to be more than the number of neurons in the human brain. These huge models, what are they doing? In the following lectures, we will talk about two things. We will talk about BERT and GPT. We will introduce these two models to you. Let you know what these self-supervised learning models do. I think we are reaching the end of this section. Let's take a break and we will be back in 10 minutes.